It was almost 17 years ago when Christopher Nolan released his first Batman movie that not only really revolutionized how Batman stories were told, but also how comic book stories were told as well. They were more grounded, more realistic, had relatable elements, and of course stories and themes that were more mature. In 2012, we bid farewell to Christopher Nolan's Batman universe and a few years later welcomed a new Batman in Zack Snyder's Batman vs Superman where Batman was played by Ben Affleck. Now this Batman was more comic accurate, especially Frank Miller's version that was dark, brooding and almost morally bankrupt. Now here we are in 2022 with a new Batman movie and a new Batman. So we have to ask ourselves, how does this Batman measure up to the previous two versions? And I have to say honestly, it takes the best of two worlds. It takes the grounded and realistic approach from Nolan, as well as the dark and brooding aspect of Zack Snyder's or Frank Miller's version. And together they give us an upgraded version for this new generation and for a new decade. So how does the new movie hold up? Well, here's my non-spoiler review. Guys, I would really appreciate your support. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up icon and of course subscribe to my channel. Now moving on to the review. Right from the first time I saw this trailer, I was really excited for this movie. But I had my reservations when it came to Robert Pattinson as Batman. I just had a few doubts about it. But after having seen my movie, I can honestly say we can put those doubts aside. He knocks it out of the park. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Absolutely. Directed and co-written by Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson as the title character of Batman slash Bruce Wayne. This is probably the darkest take on the character yet. However, the movie also focuses on the investigative prowess of the character unlike any of the previous versions. The movie opens with the murder of the city mayor by a serial killer who calls himself the Riddler. And along the way he commits several murders and each of his murder scenes he leaves clues and messages for the Batman to follow. But of course, where do these messages and clues lead to? That's what the rest of the story is about. Similar to the opening and closing narration in the first Spider-Man movie, this Batman movie also has an opening and closing narration as well. In the opening, Batman tells us that it's been two years since he started fighting crime in Gotham, but he wonders if he's making a difference. However, he assures himself that he needs to try. The motivation for this is explained in the movie when an old news report talks about how the Waynes are one of the founding members of the city. Therefore, Bruce Wayne or Batman feels responsible about the welfare of it. Speaking of Gotham, it is presented as a decrepit, deteriorating cesspool of a city with rampant crime and corrupt officials, thereby justifying the presence of a vigilante like Gotham to keep crime and criminals in check. However, he's not alone in this quest as he's supported by the ever-reliable Lieutenant Gordon played by the ever-reliable Jeffrey Wright. Right, right from the beginning to the end of the movie, Lieutenant Gordon is presented as a partner for Batman as well as his biggest supporter. Now, he invites Batman to crime scenes. You've seen this in the trailer. And he supports him when other cops objects to the situation. And even when his superior officers, you know, uh, yell at Gordon or tells him that this is wrong, he still stands up for Batman. And that's a, such an admirable way in how they presented Gordon. It's a very unique way they present because earlier in situation, you always see uh, Batman and Gordon talking in the shadows or away from uh, police. You know, it's always unofficial. Here, you know, Batman is presented almost like an official partner to the police. There are many scenes where Batman is actively, uh, you know, walking along with the police in a crime scene or in one instance, uh, chasing a criminal, you could say. So that's the way Gordon and police are presented. Of course, not all the police are straight, right? There are corrupt officials, but I'm getting ahead. Uh, speaking of Gordon himself, he's faced with an uphill challenge. He does not know who to trust. He does not know, uh, you know who he can depend on. The only person he can trust and rely on is Batman. And therefore, you know, there is absolute trust over them. So we understand Gordon's perspective when it comes to speaking or working with Batman. Another Batman supporter is, of course, Alfred Pennyworth, played by Andy Serkis. Now, the relationship between Alfred and Batman has always been a plus point, whether you watch it in an animated series or in a movie. They've always presented it well. Now here, I have a critique over here. In this movie, uh, you know, Alfred is presented well, Andy Serkis plays the character well, but here's the thing. It is similar to the dynamic 
uh, that they showed in the Christopher Nolan movies, uh, where Alfred almost is a father-like figure to uh, Bruce Wayne. Now, especially there are a few uh, interactions. For example, uh, Alfred talks about the Wayne legacy, which is similar to something what was discussed in uh, the Nolan movies as well. Alfred did go to uh, Bruce Wayne and talk to him about his family legacy, that he, can al he cannot always be Batman and compromise on his family's history and legacy. And there's something similar happening here. Uh, I was actually a bit surprised because Alfred does not have a lot of scenes. He has a few scenes, of course, with Batman and, uh, you know, something happens in the story also to kind of uh, prevent further scenes. I don't want to give that away. Uh, but there aren't that many scenes. In fact, I noticed that Lieutenant Gordon had more scenes with Batman than Alfred had with Bruce Wayne or Batman. And uh, he's also hands-on, uh, you know, Alfred. He helps Batman in uh, his, uh, let's say, in his missions. So, for example, he gets a clue from a crime scene. Uh, you can see that Alfred also works on these clues and tries to help Batman. So, you know, you one could argue that, you know, the uh, Jeremy Irons in uh, Batman vs. Superman, he was Alfred to Bruce Wayne, to Ben Affleck's Batman, right? So, in that also you saw that he's a hands-on Alfred where he's helping uh, Bruce Wayne with, with crimes and solving clues, things like that. And, uh, sorry, not helping crimes, <laughs> solving clues, or helping him solve those clues. So same thing over here, this Alfred also is helping him. But again, I just want to stress that, you know, he didn't have a lot of scenes. So that just struck me as off because, um, and of course, uh, moving on from one supporter to another, the Catwoman or Selina Kyle. Zoe Kravitz brings in the right amount of vulnerability, sensuality, and of course, confidence to pull off, I would say, the perfect version of Catwoman I've ever seen. And I'm well aware of how well Michelle Pfeiffer did the role in the first Batman movies and also Anne Hathaway in Dark Knight Rises. Uh, but I have to say this is my favorite version of Catwoman because I really, really enjoyed Zoe Kravitz's performance, you know, especially the scenes with Batman. There is the right amount of, you know, flirtation, tension and drama. Because every time they look at each other, you know, you, you can see the attraction in their eyes. You know, it's it's it it's done, you know, it's it's done so well, and it it's it's so subtle. You know, it's nothing. There's nothing obvious being discussed, and uh, you know, but still, you can see the attraction over there. And <laughs> there's a part of me, you know, when I was watching for the first time, I was like, oh my god, get a room. <laughs> you know, that was my first reaction because they played it off, played off each other really well, Robert and Zoe. You know. They did such a good job. And uh, I, is she a partner to Batman? There are sequences in the movie where she's almost like a partner, especially when she goes to a particular club and, uh, you know, he's also outside trying to, you know, find a person, get more clues and things like that. Uh, there are a few scenes like that. And there are a few scenes where she's, well, I wouldn't say she's against him, but she's not particularly helping him also. Uh, but overall, again, it was a, it was a good presentation of uh, Catwoman, and I really enjoyed Zoe Kravitz's performance. Uh, you know, she was uh, I she Lieutenant Gordon is the partner, of course, but Zoe Kravitz presented another dynamic over there. She and Batman not necessarily agrees to everything, but they are willing to work together, and of course, over time, Batman and Selina they. I mean, Bruce and Selena or Batman and Selena, they develop an affection uh, for each other. Of course, Selena does not find out who Bruce is in this movie. You know, she still calls him the Batman. Of course, because Batman calls himself vengeance in certain sequences, you know, in this movie, in a few sequences, uh, she's, you know, people call him vengeance. You know, that's how they address him sometimes. So uh, there is that. Then, of course, there is the Penguin played by Colin Farrell. Now, when I saw it in the trailer, and when I saw it in the movie also, if someone didn't tell me that was Colin Farrell, I wouldn't recognize it. Because he, the makeup, I, I, I really want to stress on that, makeup they've used over there, there's some prosthetic or, uh, you know, things like that. It is so good, you know, he looks really different. However, when he uh, starts talking, you do hear a little bit of Colin Farrell over there. But still, it's a remarkable job and, you know, it's wonderfully done, the makeup again. Uh, speaking of Penguin itself, he doesn't have a big role in the story per se. You know, it, it felt like 
they were introducing a villain and who's there he's he's there in the movie you know he's there in the story as well but he's more of a side character uh initially there's almost a taste like he could be a main character but when the when a certain clue is uh you know they kind of once the clue is further examined they kind of realize it's not it was a red herring uh so uh, you know he's he's more of a side character but of course there is potential over there, over there for him to be a bigger villain and i think they announced a tv series with the penguin character so probably that's what they're going for now the character of penguin is involved in a car chase sequence with batman it in itself is one of the most exciting sequences in the movie the car chase sequence takes place in a highway filled with other cars and trucks etc so there is a beginning middle and end to the entire sequence and towards the end you know the music rises almost on operatic level you know and you saw the sequence in the trailer as well batman walking in slow motion the car penguin's car upside down you know and if with fear on his face what batman is going to do to him you know that's exactly it so it's uh, you know it was an exciting sequence however when you consider the batman franchise it's i would still say it's the second best car chase sequence the first one still being the one in uh, the dark knight where both joker is trying to catch uh, harvey dent and of course batman is saving him at uh, saving him at different uh, moments that's still number one in my book this is a close second now speaking of the operatic score the music composer of this movie is michael giacchino in the past he's done several movies like up ratatouille and of course the incredibles now he's become an mvp player of sorts composing various scores for various superhero movies like spider man doctor strange etc now here in batman he's done a wonderful job uh, with the score and it matches the tone and mood of the movie as well you know what the score is you heard it in the trailer towards the end when batman is walking in slow motion that's exactly it however hearing it in the movie theater through various uh, action or fight sequence in the movie it's it's diff- it's a whole different feeling because you know it, it's not just epic it's also something uh, to fear that's the best way to say it because batman the way they've presented in the movie and the use of this music it's almost used as a way to show how much people fear him when the music complements batman's character you know in the beginning of the movie you can see how people see the batman signal in the sky and immediately certain criminals doing certain criminal activities they stop what they're doing so it could be someone you know using graffiti or a wall he stops he drops the can and he walks away another person could be breaking into a car you know he stops and he walks away everyone is scared of batman you know and the music is used as a means to show how much people can fear it and the music does inspire them. there's an epicness to it but at the same time you know there is a feeling of terror batman is a force of nature you know it's almost like he's not human the way he's presented so people or criminals fear him Uh, so the music complements that and uh, you know it's a beautiful addition and michael has done a great job with it finally coming to the villain of this movie the riddler played by paul dano uh, now paul dano has done incredible roles in the past okay i loved his performance in prisoners and i was really looking forward to his take on the riddler uh, however i would say that's the weakest part of the movie uh, no offense to you know anyone you know paul dano did his best of course but the fact remains that you know if you introduce a protagonist you know who's intimidating and strong and powerful there has to be an antagonist on the other end who can genuinely challenge him you know if not physically at least intellectually uh, so riddler is definitely intellectual you know he sets up these crime scenes and he leaves clue behind of course so there is an intellect over there but eventually what it all leads to you know it becomes a situation where oh riddler is another, just another psychopath you know that's what i felt it it all came down to the fact that riddler is another psychopath and he's got a psychotic plan and batman has to stop him and that comes to the climax as well uh there's an attempt to attempt to create something big and epic uh but when i compare it to the previous three batman movies by nolan the climax for all three movies were bigger and better This one had its moments you know bro, uh, the riddler set up a few explosions in the city resulting in certain chaos and then batman has to deal with it and save people so it's there but it it felt like 
you know okay this since this is a superhero movie he has to do superhero things and save people because until then you know he was the detective batman you know most you see detective batman until then so this was him being yeah i'm a superhero now i have to save people so he's you know swinging across and you know saving people beating up bad guys you know all that you know it's fine of course i love to see all that it's not that bad but the way this movie was going it felt like you know there was something more to it you know there's there is a big epic showdown or a climax so don't expect that in fact i would say the climax what happens over there the action and everything that happens over there it would you know it's something that usually would be good enough for a middle part of the movie where you see something and say yeah that was good okay this doesn't feel like a big climax you know there is not there's no real big twist over here uh, you know no big showdown no big villain no big uh, you know threat you know it's just as far as batman's expertise goes this is just a regular tuesday for him you know that's what i felt okay bad guys i got to beat up them okay got to say these people go like that uh, but he does that you know it's fine and again based on all of this i think the best part of that the climax involves gotham citizens so he saves a bunch of citizens so in the beginning of the movie he talks about how he feels like he's losing the war in spite of him you know fighting crime so towards the end it shows that you know there are people willing to believe in him believe, believe in his cause or at least you know he or accept him as a hero of gotham uh so I, that was the biggest uh, you know positive over there with the climax the way it was presented and it it really services the story you know when i say these things about the climax it's it's just nitpicks the movie is great um, my only uh, you know complain over there as a viewer watching in a movie theater i just feel like you know they could do a little more there's a little more excitement left you know i just felt that you know that's it it's a nitpick it's not a big deal uh, but yeah but the best part of it is uh, an element they set up in the initial part you know when like i said he's a narration he's there's a narration over there in the beginning where he talks about you know he's losing hope and in the end he feels hopeful about the future of gotham and uh, you know that's the way the uh, movie ends uh, you know of course riddler is locked up and you know he's upset to say the least and there is a tease of another potential villain who i'm not going to say because it's a spoiler uh, and the villain is right next to uh, riddler cell and you know he's talking to the riddler uh, even in the movie they don't give away who the other villain is but you know you you can guess you can guess who it is so that's interesting you know how they set up that they have a conversation and uh, just a small little scene over there and of course batman in the end uh, lot more hopeful you know about the future of gotham and and again like he says in the first part uh, like he says said in the beginning of the movie in the end also he says uh, you know he's going to save gotham you know and no matter what and like he reassures himself in the beginning i have to keep trying that's what he says and of course the movie is over so that's my non spoiler review of the batman Okay coming to my final thoughts before I give my rating uh unlike previous batman movies nearly 90 to 95% of the screen time uh you know Bruce Wayne is in the batman costume he is batman he you know most of the story is told from batman perspective there is very little bruce wayne in this movie uh in fact there were there's a there is a scene where alfred tells him like i said you know he talks about family legacy and things like that he you know he tells him that you know he needs to look after the family business and things like that and bruce wayne outwardly rejects it he's like i'm not interested in any of that you know this is what i want to focus on this is my family legacy in helping gotham you know uh, so there is very little bruce wayne in this entire story and to a large extent you know bruce wayne is a mask batman is who bruce wayne is you know that's how they've told different stories so in this story itself i think that's what they're trying to say there there is barely bruce wayne and uh, to a large extent and even when bruce wayne appears on screen you know earlier versions of bruce wayne what did they do they smiled you know they uh, were confident they played around uh, they had women on both arms and things like that right this uh, this bruce wayne 
when he appears in public also he's quiet he's reserved you know the, it, he he's almost tortured in every scene you see him when he's alone when he's by himself without the batman costume it's almost like he's he feels tortured when he's bruce wayne without the costume without doing what he's doing as batman um I think it's a very interesting take. Again, this is a Batman who's uh, started fighting crime for two years now, so he's very new to it. So probably he hasn't developed the persona of uh, Bruce Wayne yet, how he should appear in public. So that could be it as well. Uh, so those are my final thoughts. And as far the rating is concerned, I would give it four out of five stars. It is a must-watch Batman movie in theaters. Totally worth your time. Totally worth your money. Uh, so go for it. you know no doubt you're going to have a great time having said that this is my review thank you for watching have a great day and of course if you like the video please hit the thumbs up icon and subscribe to my channel